Hi guys, welcome to another tutorial brought to you by the ChemEng student. In this lesson we're going to take a look at the design procedure for a plate absorption tower. Now the premise of the design for absorption towers is based on the operating line equation. Now it's normally more convenient for us to model this in terms of the inert material rather than the actual material that is being absorbed from one stream to the other. So that's where these terms L prime and V prime come in. So when you see a prime, this is referring to the inert gas or inert liquid within the system, i.e. the non-transferring species. Now for one solute, the values of L prime and V prime can be defined as the following. So if we have a system whereby our liquid feed is uh, L, so this is our solute, then the inert flow, so this is the total flow rate, would be the flow rate of your solute multiplied by 1 minus the mass or mole fraction of your solute within that stream. So obviously the remainder will have to be the flow rate governed by the inert uh, material. And likewise we can rearrange this for L if we know L prime and we know X. And similarly, we can do the same for V prime, whereby this is for the vapor phase, that L is obviously for the liquid phase, and instead of having the fraction in the liquid, this is the fraction in the vapor. Now, it's based on a general schematic that looks like this. So, if we consider the overall component balance for A, then what we have here is if we look at these four streams, so we have this stream here, this one here and here. Now the system goes in a counter current flow because counter current allows us to maximize the rate of mass transfer. So here we have our inlet here and an inlet here. So we'd have our liquid coming down here and our vapor coming in here. That way they will pass each other and transfer the solute across. We then have our outlet here and an outlet here. So if we look at this balance, we can see that L0, X0 corresponds to the inlet. So L0 is the flow rate, X0 is the, uh, the fraction, plus Vn plus 1, Yn plus 1, so that would be here, this is the other inlet, must be equal to the outlet, which is Ln, Xn, plus V1, Y1. Now these are just nomenclature um, terms, we can number these depending on the number of stages we have. So again, the N is just the generic uh, stage number. So we'll look at that in just a second. Now if we substitute in the equations that we know for L and V in terms of the inert, then what we end up with is something that looks like this. So we are replacing the L naught, the Vn plus 1, Ln and V1 with the corresponding equations that we've seen in the previous slide. So here we have L prime is equal to X naught over 1 minus X naught, V prime, Yn plus 1, 1 minus Yn plus 1, and so on. Now the reason we do this is because the flow rate of the inert won't change throughout the system. Because here what we would need to know is we would need to know the individual values of L0, Vn plus 1, Ln and V1. Whereas by doing it in terms of the inert, all we have here is just two variables. Because that one there is the same as that, and that one there is the same as that. So we've actually halved our degree of freedom. Now again, if we balance around the dashed lines, this will give us what is known as the operating line for your absorption column. So whenever you hear about the operating line or absorption column, uh, this is the equation that we refer to. And this is the baseline for the design procedure of an absorption tower. Now if we take a look at an exercise here, it says that we have a tray tower that's to be designed to absorb SO2 from the airstream by using pure water at 293 degrees Kelvin. Now the air that enters the system contains 20 mole percent SO2. So we now have one of our fractions is 0.2. And it then leaves the system at 2 mole percent. So we're removing 18 mole percent from the air to the liquid. Now we operate at 101.3 kilopascals, so we're at atmospheric pressure. 
and the inert, the inert flows is 150 kilograms of air per hour meters squared and entering water flow is 6,000 kilograms of water per hour meter squared. So these are the inerts of the system, the water and the air. Now we have an overall tray efficiency of 25%. We need to determine the theoretical number of trays and the actual number of trays, assuming that the tower operates at 20 degrees Celsius. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll have the general schematic here, whereby we have our Vn plus 1, Yn plus 1, Ln, Xn, V1, Y1, and L0, X0. So what we'll do is we now need to determine the values of V' prime and L'. prime. So we know that we had 150, that's for the air, divided by the moles of the air, which is 29. So we know that the kilomoles of an air air per hour meter squared is 5.18. Likewise, we can do the same for L prime, whereby we have the flow rate divided by the uh, molar uh, mass of water, gives us 333 kilomoles of inert water per hour meter squared. So now we have the flow rates of the inerts, the air and the water. Now we know, or we're given the concentrations at the respective points. So we know that in the inlet gas, our concentration was 20%. So here, Yn plus 1 is actually 20%, or 0 0.2. And we know that coming into the system, there is no SO2 in the water. Therefore, X0 is equal to 0. Our final uh, concentration of SO2 in the gas stream is 0 0.02, because we had 2% in the outlet gas. The only unknown in terms of concentration-wise or fraction-wise, is the outlet and the liquid phase. So what we can then say is that the overall material balance is found from the, uh, the overall operating line equation. So we can substitute in this and this with corresponding values here in order to determine the corresponding value of Xn. Because we know this, we know this, and we know this, the only unknown here is Xn. So as you can see, we substitute in everything. This will, of course, cancel each other out. And then when we go about and rearrange, we get an Xn value to be 0 0.00355. Now, what we can then do here is, again, this is our operating line. We always come back. Once we find a term, we can always come back to the operating line and then start to work on the next point. So what we'll then do here is we'll substitute in except for the yn plus 1 and the xn. And then what we'll do is in order to determine the number of theoretical stages, we have our limits. And our limits are between 0 0.02 in the y and 0 0.2 in the y as well. Because that is what our initial concentration is, so 0 0.2 to 0 0.02 or 2%. So that's our limits that we have to work with. And we know the corresponding value of x when it's 0.2 is 0 0.00355. That's what we just worked out here. So what we can then do is if we substitute in different values of y, we can get the corresponding value of x. And then what we can do is start to plot it. And again, we know that when the concentration is 0 0.02, that x0 is 0. So we just pluck values between, so intermediate points between 0 0.02 and 0.2. And then what we can then do, so there's our equilibrium data for SO2 water system. We can pluck values up to 0 0.2. And then when we plot this, we will have our equilibrium curve, which is here. That's from this data. So we plot this against this. That's our equilibrium curve. We have our operating line. And that's determined from the four points that we found. So that's our 0 0.020. 0. That was our 0 0.2 um, and then 0 0.00355. And then that's our other two intermediate points. So then that's our operating line. Then what we do is it's very similar to, say, the McCabe-Thiel method for distillation um, column design. Is we start off at this point here. Or likewise, you could start up here, it doesn't matter. But here we're going to start at the 0 0.02 and we drive along to the equilibrium curve. Then we draw up till we hit the operating line, across again, then up, and then across. 
and we can see that we take one tray, two tray, and then a par of three. So we're not quite at three trays yet, so we're two and a bit trays. And here we calculated this to be 2.4 theoretical number of trays. Now granted, you can't have 0.4 of a tray, so you would always have to round it up the way. Because if we go to two, it's not enough. But there's one thing we have to consider here, is that our efficiency is 25%. So we have to divide this by 0.25, and that will tell us that our actual number of trays required is 9.6. So therefore, we actually need 10 trays in order for this to reach that level of extraction. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in helping you understand the design of an absorption column. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.